Hi folks, and welcome back to Fishing with Den. So today, I'm doing a bit of paste fishing. And when I say paste, I really mean ground bait mixed up into a really sloppy sort of a, a paste that you can mould in your hand. Okay, and that's what's going on the hook. And literally, that is going to be what I'm doing all day. It's how I'm going to feed, and it's how I'm going to fish on the hook. And literally, I'm going to get some pellets, just a few of these normal pellets, put that in the pot, and I'm going to ship out with this very light but quite a long tip on the float. Homemade float, but a lot of people in England when they're fishing with um, paste, what they tend to do is use the Preston paste floats. There's a one, two and a three, so by all means if you want to use that please feel free to go ahead. Let me just put this into the right place and pop it in. And we're ready to rock and roll. Now I've been fishing for probably 15 minutes and the reason I'm doing this by the way is purely because... Oh, what on earth have we got on here? That went in and straight under. <laughs> I've got a feeling that this isn't necessarily a carp, but it might be. <laughs> well, that is probably foul hooked, I would think. But that literally went in and went under. And I've only been fishing for a, a few minutes. So, hang on, I'm pretty sure that's foul hooked. I think I've got it in the tail, actually. Let's just see what we've got. Oh, it's an eel. <laughs> Horrible, I'm glad it fell off. <laughs> I know I'm a wuss, but hey, it's actually bitten me off. So, I can see that this is going to be one of those days. Look at that. Bitten a size 10 hook off. Anyway, we'll get back to that in a minute, but let's talk a little bit about why I'm doing this. And this is actually a practice match. Sorry, a practice for a match. If you watched the video a couple of weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, where I... I uh, was fishing the club pond, um, we've got a proliferation of small carp in the 4 to 8 ounce range but then as you saw me catch that 17 pounder, you've also got some big fish in there so it was a bit of a toss up as to what I did. Now, what I'm thinking this time is, if I use paste, I might be able to catch smallish fish and also get some big lumps. So. It's not going to be quite exactly how I'm doing it today, because I've got a couple of other ideas, but this is just me practicing paste fishing. And I haven't done this for quite some time, and so I probably will make some mistakes. But the reason I'm doing this is purely and simply to see if it'll work on the club venue uh, at the weekend, for the weekend match. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details of how to do paste fishing at this point in time, because, um, as I say, I'm pretty much out of practice at this. So. What I'll do is I'll sort of show you how the day progresses, what we catch, and give you an idea of what's what. But in the meantime, I've got to put another hook on, and this is all abraded. So that was obviously quite a big eel, and to be honest, I'm kind of glad it fell off, but it's a bit of a pain having to tie another hook on. However, I can live with that. So back in a sec once I've sorted myself out. Okay, well I'm sorted out again, and I've actually changed the, the rig. Um, I was actually going to put just another hook on, but if I'm going to catch things like eels which are going to bite me off I was fishing straight through so I've just put this rig on and I've actually got a hook length on now so if I do get bitten off again I can just change the hook length instead of having to change the, the whole rig so hopefully we won't catch any more of those because as I gathered as you gathered I hate them oops that's not good then there we go gotta be a little bit careful how you ship these things out but I've got a red tip float on now um, the wind's actually getting up a little bit, which is not the kind of conditions you want to be doing this in, but hey, it's uh, something I want to try out, so I'm going to persevere. Okay, so I've actually been feeding still just through the pole pot while I was re-rigging, so it's not as though I've lost the fish. Let's see how we fare. In actual fact, the red float tip is actually easier to see than the other one. Gone just a fraction deeper just to accommodate the 
the wind and the drag and that seems to be keeping the float a little bit higher which is fine. And plenty of movement on it. Oh no you see that's what you shouldn't do. When you're paste fishing don't strike at dibs and that's just exactly what I just did. I told you I was out of practice didn't I? I haven't done this for probably six, eight years, something like that. So excuse me if I make a bit of a mess of things while I'm messing around. But that's the point of coming out practicing for the match. Get all your bits and pieces wrong now so you can get it right when you're actually fishing the match. All I'm doing, just squeeze, put a dent in it, fold it over. This bait isn't necessarily correct yet, but you can alter that as you going along. Right that looks okay. Make sure you keep a bowl of water next to you because this is kind of a messy way of fishing. A few pellets, bait in the pot and off we go again. Doesn't really get much simpler than this it's just a question of getting a few basics down right and as I say if I decide I'm going to use the pace method on the match and it all works out I'll do a video a bit of a tutorial on how to fish paste as I say, I'm not really an expert on it, but I can certainly give you all the basics. And one of them is, don't fish at 9 metres like I'm doing now. <laughs> the reason I'm not fishing closer today is because when I come to fish the match, I'm probably going to have to fish at 9 metres because it's quite shallow if I get that same area where I was fishing last time. Now, there's a possibility if I end up on the damn wall, I won't be able to do this at all. But, for the next time I draw down the side, I'll certainly be able to count this as part of my armoury. Yay! Wait for it to go then. Well, that's uh, taking some line. I'm glad I put the <laughs> 20 to 22 elastic on. Doesn't feel like it's a eel this time, definitely feels more like a, a carp and it might well be a decent one. Certainly fighting a little bit. Right, come on fish. Off down to the right, down to the edge. Come on. Oh, it's another eel. That's all I need. Yak. And this is why I put the um, hook length on. Because I don't want to catch these, but I tend to lose my hook lengths when I'm doing it. Oh wow, yak. Come on. They just don't give up eels, do they? Yeah, <laughs> oh, he's come off. <laughs> well, what a performance we're having today. This wind's really getting strong as well, so it shows the wrong day for this. According to the weather forecast, there wasn't supposed to be a strong wind today. And, yeah, <laughs> he's taken the hook again, look. That's why I put the hook length on. And there's slimes everywhere. Yak. Alright, back in a minute again. Okay, well that clearly wasn't working. Um, obviously, fishing at 9 metres in what's quite a, a fair wind at the moment is uh, making things difficult especially with the arthritis um, so I've actually come in to where is a bit more normal it's probably a top two plus three I think which is seven seven and a half meters something like that so we'll see how we go with it obviously I've been feeding further out but what can you do I'm gonna start feeding this seven and a half meter line hopefully they'll come into that one as well once they've finished off with the feed out there but I've obviously had to shallow up too, we're now probably less than three feet. But, again, you have to just adapt to the conditions. Normally, I probably would have 
tried something else at this point, but I've only got paste with me today to make sure I only did this. So we'll carry on and we'll persevere, see what happens. But at seven and a half meters, it should be easier to hold the pole. Yes. Oh no. <laughs> I've got a feeling this is another eel. This is just not what we need. Wrong bait. This crab bait's got a fish element to it and it's something that eels tend to love. And, <laughs> well, not an eel this time, a turtle. I'll catch something in a minute other than these. We'll get him back in a sec, but I don't want to hurt him. Ah, dearie me. What next, eh? Be nice to catch a fish. Uh, get him taken off and then we'll uh, come back and see what we can do about catching a carp. Maybe a little bit shaken up, but none the worse. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't know what we've got to do to catch a carp today. Probably change bait, I would think. But, as I say, we persevere for a while. We've got, this is the only bait we've got, so we're going to have to carry on. Certainly looking like... Uh, the wrong move for the match at the weekend, I think. I'm going to end up catching these sorts of things. Give it a few more goes, eh? I got another bite. There's lots of indications, but I've got a feeling this is another eel. You never know. Oh no, it's a carp. Wow. First carp. Oof. Wow. At the moment, this method would be no good for Sunday. Obviously, you need to be catching regularly on Sunday to do any good. And this is my first carp after probably an hour. Loads and loads of indications. <laughs> One or two um, eels and a couple of turtles so far. And this is the first one. So, it may be that you have to feed everything else off and wait till the carp arrive and um, push everything else out. Uh, that's me really wishful thinking, I know. I'm kind of hoping that that's the way it's going to work out. I'm actually a long way up off the water here as well, as you can probably see. It's a 3.3 metre landing net and I'm at pretty much full extension. Nice enough fish though. See what we got. He's probably five pounds or so. But it's a carp. That'll do. <laughs> Well, not absolutely sure what this is. It's kind of strange, could be an eel. I've just changed rigs, trying something completely different. Oh, hang on, it might be a carp, small carp. What I've done, I've put a fairly standard, oof, ow. <laughs> well, anyway, that was first chuck and first bite. And what I've done, as I was trying to say, I've put a fairly standard rig on. It's a 0.4 of a gram float, 14 or maybe a 12 hook, I don't know. And I've got a little bit of some other paste that I mixed up last night. Now this is more the sort of like cheese paste consistency you'd use for chub. This one goes on the hook and stays there. It doesn't melt in the same way, but it's still fairly soft. So the plan was to 
continue doing what I was doing, feed a few pellets, get some of the old dissolving um, paste and put that in. Now this one, because it's on the hook and it's small and it's that sort of thicker consistency, will actually hold up to being put out there in the normal way. So, literally what I did, I shipped out, put the pot in in the normal way and then we're now fishing probably three inches on the bottom with this um, normal rig and obviously with a smallish piece of paste which is probably the size of I don't know a couple of peas worth that literally got me a bite pretty much straight away and uh, partly this is because I'm finding it difficult with the wind but also because it just wasn't working before I'm getting plenty of knocks still the last two fish have been carp or two bites have been carp so uh, maybe they're moving in still got plenty of tips sticking out but at least now I'm able to control the float a bit more it wasn't really doing it quite as I wanted because of the wind whoa and my umbrella's just blown away <laughs> Right, back in a sec. Having a bit of a nightmare today. Uh, I'm going to have to take this down, I think. It just blew inside out with that wind. Well, <laughs> these things are sent to try us, aren't they? They're certainly me today. I was trying to keep the sun off because it's 35 degrees at the moment. And I know you guys back home are sort of freezing, so I don't want to make too much of that, but it's actually too hot to be messing around with today. You need to make sure you've got as much cover as you can. Right, well, we'll get back out. And I've still got some bait on, just to see how we go. Plenty of dibs. And, yeah, well, that's definitely a carp. Well, is this the way to go? Not a big carp. Well, you may go back to doing the other way at some point. But oh. is this foul hooked? No, I just got wrapped round. It's only a small one though. Still, at least we're getting one or two carp now. So all is not lost quite yet. Probably about a pound or so look and he's come off in the net but yeah nice looking fish look as I said just a few pellets in some of the quick breakdown paste that should be on the hook a little dib of that um, slightly thicker consistency paste on the hook and we'll get back out there and try again if I can get these carp moving I'll go back to trying the paste the big paste on the hook at some point but I was finding that really difficult to uh, to hook anything. Remember, this is a natural venue, and these things have never seen bait before, except mine when I come here, because nobody else ever fishes this place. And straight under. All right, it looks like they may have moved in. So, is this a a plan? Certainly the smallish fish, similar to what I'll be catching the weekend. So, I can get them to come in fairly close to this sort of top two plus three at the weekend. Maybe, lovely jubbly as Del Boy used to say. This one's a bit bigger, this one's probably a couple of pound actually. And I'm caught in the net, I'm caught in his lip and there we go, that's... Uh, do that. Yeah, I know he's upside down, but probably, yeah, pound and three quarters maybe. At least I'm getting bites on this, but still not sure if they're going to be eels or not. Or the occasional ninja turtle. Ah, 
pole keeps blowing away now. I need to put my hat on as well. I've just had to take that umbrella down because it was blowing away. This wasn't the plan. This wind's really causing me a bit of an issue at the moment. Oh! <laughs> that must have took more or less on the drop. Hang on. Right, one more go, just, just in case. A few pellets in it this time. I've run out of paste in the uh, the bait box there, so I'm going to have to grab some more out of my main stash. I don't always put it out all at once because, as you can probably gather, it tends to dry up at this sort of heat. Yes. Well, he's travelling off a little bit. Might be somewhat bigger. And off to the side. I don't be going back down where I just caught you. Why do they always do that? Actually not that much bigger, he just fought well. All right, we'll get some more bait out from the, the tub and we'll give the, the soft paste another go, see what happens. Same sort of size, you know, sort of pound, pound and a half sort of thing. Actually maybe two, but only just if it is. Okay, got some fresh paste. Get this on the hook and uh, just see if it'll produce anything bigger. But at least the carp seem to have turned up now. We're catching carp instead of catching everything else that swims. That was like famous last words to me then, but hey, you never know. I just hope I get, can get control of this because that's the problem at the moment is stopping it from sort of getting caught up with the wind. You never know though. I've actually taken the very top uh, rubber off the, the tip of the float. I have one right at the very tip, which didn't give me a lot of help when it was windy like that. I keep getting gusts now, that's the problem. Oh, it went under, but missed it. But at least I'm getting some idea of what to expect now. This may or may not work at the weekend, but some of that other paste might. One of the things I have learned, of course, is not to use a fish-based ground bait because all it does is attract the wrong things, as in eels. <laughs> yes, I'd forgotten just how frustrating it can be to uh, fish with paste. Maybe that's why I stopped doing it. <laughs> it's different though, isn't it? I managed to get myself tangled up because of the stupid strike there. Told you I'd make a few mistakes, didn't I? It's better than working, guys. Well, loads of movement, but not translating into bites. They just don't seem to want to know, a big ball.
I'll go back to the other one after this, the standard rig with a small piece of paste on and try that I think. This wind's actually getting stronger so not helpful at all. So I'll go to a sort of a pea sized or slightly bigger than a pea on this one. Remember it's 14 hook on this. But we'll still put some pellets and some ground bait or paste rather into the pot each time. Just keep following the principles. I wouldn't be surprised if this goes under pretty much straight away. Hmm. Well, are they getting a little bit bigger? Last one certainly was, but I think it was probably only in the sort of six poundish range. Oh, this one's just the standard sort of size. About a pound or two. But it just goes to show that this is easily outfishing the big blobber paste. So, can I make up a way of doing this, a technique to capitalize on catching some of the bigger range of the smaller fish in the uh, pond that we're going to be fishing on Sunday? I have to give that one some thought, I think, whether to try it or not. Oof! <laughs> Hit him. Didn't get him. Well, I think fairly soon now I'm going to have to give this up for the day and get home. Um, so what's the verdict? Well, I think the jury is still out. I think one of the things I did wrong was to bring a fish based or fish smelling um, ground bait paste, which didn't help because of course all that did was attract eels and turtles. So that's the first thing I'm going to change. And the next thing I did, I came on a day when it was windier than supposed to be and I was hoping it would be a lot less windy. So of course I started at sort of nine meters or so and then couldn't really get any control and in fact I couldn't really get control even at this sort of seven seven and a half meters whatever I'm fishing top two plus three um, having said that that other bit of paste the slightly stodgier paste that I'm using on the hook now just the sort of the pea-sized pieces that is producing a few fish but then again you see what I've caught just as many if not more on sweet corn so I think for me, the verdict is out on this one. Probably won't uh, use it this weekend on the match. I think I need to refine it a bit more before I even consider that. But hey, you'd think, oops, <laughs> you'd think it was a waste of time today, but it actually wasn't because although what I learned was quite negative in some respects, it's going to stop me making those same mistakes again. Well, hopefully anyway. So really, all in all, uh, I've had a few fish and a few eels and things but it's an enjoyable day and I've learned some stuff and you're always learning when you're doing this sort of thing and in the end you know enjoying yourself and doing a bit of fishing and learning is what it's all about so that's it for today then guys hope you enjoyed it if you did as always click the like button if you want to subscribe you can and until the next time bye for now